Okay, in this quick video, I'm gonna talk about hot gas reheat in DX equipment, the purpose and function. So before we get into what hot gas reheat is, we really have to talk a little bit about dehumidification. How do we dehumidify air in HVAC systems? To understand that, we have to know what dew point is. So dew point is basically measures when the moisture will drop out of suspension of the air. So for example, this uh, graphic here shows a cold bottle of water, which is out of the refrigerator, maybe at 50-ish degrees. You walk outside on the porch to enjoy your, your cool drink. If the dew point of the air outside is, is higher than 50 degrees, the temperature of this surface, you will condense moisture. And that's essentially how we remove moisture from the air in HVAC systems. So if you look at this drawing here, it's a standard, you know, typical air handling unit. You've got a mixed air condition of 8067. The dew point of that air is 59 degrees. I'm going to circle that right there. Let's say this coil is colder than 59 degrees dew point. Hopefully it is if your system's working properly. And if so, you will condense moisture out of the air. And that's typically how we remove moisture. That is what's called dehumidification. We're removing moisture from the airstream. Super simple. On a psychometric chart, this is kind of what it looks like. This would be your space condition. In this case, it's 75, 50% RH. You have some outdoor air, you mix the two streams, and you end up at the 8067. It goes through your cooling coil here, where it decreases the temperature and the humidity in the air. So you're lowering the temperature and humidity, and therefore dehumidifying. Okay, it enters the space. You pick up a few degrees of fan heat. Um, Actually, you pick up a few degrees of fan heat, then it enters the space, and then it rides what's called the sensible heat ratio line up to that condition. And that's a full load dehumidification psychometric process. So where does reheat come in? Okay, now we have to talk a little bit about the refrigeration cycle so you can understand what's going on there. So this is your standard refrigeration cycle. It's the standard set of components you'll find in anything from a, a, water, a water fountain up into a a 2000 ton centrifugal chiller. It's all got these same four components. You got a compressor, a condenser, an expansion valve or pressure drop device, and your evaporator coil. So what happens is the refrigerant leaves your compressor at about, this is a 410A example, by the way. So these temperatures and pressures would be different depending on the refrigerant you're looking at. So 140 degrees-ish, um, leaving the condenser around 100 degrees. And these are just you know ballpark numbers um, leaves the pressure drop device. It goes into the pressure drop device, decreases pressure and temperature. Now the refrigerant's in a state where it can absorb heat and change state, which is super important because when you change from a liquid to a, a gas, you absorb a lot of BTUs and that's what happens there. So just so you know, to the pressures of the high side in a 410A is around 400, you know, 375 ish, something like that at 120 entering the coil. So where does hot gas reheat come in, right? So here's where we use hot gas reheat. So let's say you had the same refrigeration circuit. Go ahead and blow that up here so we can see it. Let's say you're in a dehumidification cycle where you've got 45 degree leaving air temperature. So you've got a space, I don't know, some kind of pharmaceutical manufacturing where you need a cooler air, a lower dew point in the space. Now at full load, it may be fine to pump in this 45 degree temperature air into the space, but at part load, you might overcool the space. So your choices are to, you know, turn off the compressor, which is not good if you're trying to dehumidify or elevate the leaving air temperature by cycling or modulating the compressor, excuse me. That also is not good if you're trying to dehumidify. So this is where hot gas reheat comes in. Okay. So you've got this, how do we, how do we reheat this air? Like you got this air, it's dehumidified. It's very cool, very low in humidity but it's too cold. It's too cold for the space. So we take some of this heat that's coming off the evaporator, which in this case is 140 degrees. We take that heat that we would normally reject to the relatively cool atmosphere in the condenser, and we just divert that over to another coil downstream of the cooling coil, which is, let me get my pen working here, which is right here, your hot gas reheat coil, right? So boom. That's where hot gas reheat comes in. So now we could take that air that's 45 degrees and through this three-way valve, we can modulate the refrigerant in a way that we can reheat the air basically wherever we need it up to, you know, 80-ish degrees, depending on the, 
the the state of the system. Okay, so that's basically how that works. Here's how it looks on a psychometric chart. So we get back to the psych chart and we take this condition here, goes to the cooling coil, it cools and dehumidifies to the cooling coil, which we show here. Now there's where the reheat comes in, which is this line from this point here to here. That would represent the hot gas reheat we just looked at, which was, you know, 45-ish up to 60, I believe, which are the temperatures down here. Now, a couple things to note. Reheating the air does not dehumidify the air, okay? When you go from left to right on the psychometric chart, it's sensible cooling only, which means you don't remove any moisture. Moisture removal happens as you go down the chart, either, you know, straight up and down or diagonally in any direction. Anytime you go from a higher point to a lower point on the chart, like this cooling coil curve here, you're removing moisture, you're dehumidifying. So reheat does not dehumidify. Just keep that in mind. It's only there to add sensible heat. It is used in the dehumidification cycle, but it doesn't in itself dehumidify the air. This yellow line represents a little bit of fan heat. And then this would be the space, the condition of the air going back into the space. And then you would ride up the space SHR. In this case, an extreme part load, maybe a 0.53 SHR, which you don't see very often, but use that to illustrate the point of this slide. So thanks for watching. You can connect with us in any of these channels, our Insight Partners HVACT, HVAC TV YouTube channel. Um, you can check out our website, insightusa.com, or you can check out the Engineers HVAC podcast, which is our podcast version of, of these videos. So thank you so much for joining. We appreciate it. We hope you got something out of this. Thanks.